We are now coming to the next interview, this time with uh, Rondinella and Francesca here on my side is the uh, responsible for the uh, export of uh, Rondinella. Rondinella is a very well established uh, company as you all know, founded in 1936 and um, we are always very impressed, especially when we talk from a European perspective, how a company like yours uh, manages with this long tradition to still produce wonderful quality in Italy. Tell us more about um, uh, the production of your shoes here in Italy. Yeah, uh, Rotinella is a company based in Monte San Giusto. It's a very, very small town of the center of Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, the most interesting thing, I think, is that uh, a family, the, the history of Rondinella is a family, a family story. Yes. Because a person, the name was Alfredo, mm -hmm. started the company yes. in 1936, and then the son, and then the son of the son yes. continued the yeah. tradition. So it is still so a family-owned company. Yeah, and the actual owner yes. are two brothers, and yes. one of them is again Alfredo because yeah. also in the names yes, we have I a tradition. See. Yes. So uh, this long tradition yes. give to Rondinella the, um, the quality know-how mm. and today we can produce very qualitative shoes yeah. uh, using and exploiting all the know-how of 80 years. Yes. Um, how is it, uh, or oh, I can imagine that over the last, let's say, 20 years, um, it was sometimes possibly not that easy to find craftsmen in, in Italy because, you know, prices were pretty high. Um, there are cheaper locations worldwide where you could produce shoes much more cheaply. How did you get around to actually produce a quality product, which is, you know, expensive to produce, still in Italy? Um, it's a, a choice yeah. uh, that means that the owners decide to continue yeah. the tradition not always also in the um, in the place so mm. they are still producing shoes mm. in Monte San Giusto where they started and even the the price of the the work Yes. It's very high and expensive. They decided to continue mm. there mm. because you can, of course, go in other countries and have cheaper prices, but the quality of the product mm. is not the same. Mm. So they take really um, a way to continue producing very qualitative shoes with the same way, in the same place, mm. because they believe that, the, uh, uh, that quality is a combination mm. of features, mm. the place, also the area, yeah. and the tradition of the area, mm. and all these elements make Romanella so special mm. and so qualitative. Mm. The children's shoes especially are you know, uh, again, uh, a very delicate uh, product, you know, it's, it's, you know, the tiny feet of children um, which need to be protected. Um, there are all kinds of uh, issues, you know, environmental issues, you know, sustainability, is it good for the skin? Um, how do you test, how do you make sure that the material you use really reflects your standards and your criteria? Um, do you go to those factories and check everything and, you know, make your analysis? How do you do that? Yes, of course. We are asking to our suppliers mm. uh, to give us all documents and certifications about the products mm. we are buying. Mm. So, for example, when we are buying leaders, we have um, a certificate when, where we can mm. read the um, where the leader is producing, yeah. with how 
the, the leather is worth. So it's really possible for us to check everything mm. and to decide if the mm. suppliers is correct mm. for our standards or not. Okay. For mm. example, uh, concerning leathers, we are using only calf leathers, mm. also for the lining, the okay. inside, yes. because we believe that quality means also uh, very good materials. Mm. We can't do quality shoes uh, with plastic or uh, not good materials. Yeah. But besides the production, obviously the shoe is much more than just leather and uh, laces and so on. There's lots of design involved, there's lots of creativity first of all involved. Um, do you design you know, the actual style, you know, when you look at um, the, the latest models you've uh, developed, all this happens at home in your factory. You know, talk us through, um, how do you uh, go about designing a new shoe? What is, um, because there we are coming to, uh, to your USP, you know, Bondinella is not only shoes, it's a very creative label. So tell us more about that. So, uh, it's the design process is like um, a teamwork because not only one person mm. is doing that but a lot of person are doing that so we have person that people that are working usually in the factory a designer a stylist mm. and uh, for example me also because uh, mm. as the um, commercial director I'm saying what is better for a market or yes. for another and also the, the owners they mm -hmm. like to participate and be involved yeah. and be involved mm -hmm. yes and yeah. uh, we have also some external collaborators mm -hmm. for example uh, this season we had a very good partnership with a young illustrator okay. that designed special characters for us okay. and we put these characters on the shoes. Okay. The shoes become a sort of monster shoes. Yes, okay. We call them we call it muso. Mm. But uh, we will maybe speak about muso uh, yes. later. Yeah. Uh, just to speak about the the design process uh, is a teamwork and we have people working all the day in the factory but also people from other places mm. that are helping yes. us in this creative process. Yeah. It's, you know, shoes, um, I'm now talking for a moment from a German perspective. Uh, the German consumer, as we all know, is uh, rather cost conscious and uh, ref reflects long and hard on where to spend his money. Uh, shoes are, you know, quite expensive, you know, and uh, children are growing quickly. And uh, every mother, every father, you know, looks at the cost and says, oh dear, you know, what shall we do? Shall we spend this amount of money uh, or not? Because, you know, these shoes will not be usable in, you know, a year's time which is, you know, the eternal conflict you have as parents. Uh, still, you place your shoes uh, at um, a certain level. And um, what's, you know, the thinking behind that? I'm, I will reply to you what I'm replying every time a person tell me uh, these shoes are so expensive and they are kids shoes uh, I'm replying also when you are eating a steak on a best on a good restaurant you are eating a steak maybe for 100 euros and the time of the steak is only 30 minutes mm -hmm. so everything depends mm -hmm. on the everything depends and when you are thinking that a, a, chi a child uh, can really um, use good shoes and when you are using qualitative shoes for a kid you are also helping the growth mm -hmm. of Mm. of the kids, I think they are not expensive enough. Mm. 
everything depends. And for example, when you are using um, shoes without comfort mm. or a very soft sole, it's not good for a kid that start to walk. Mm. So if a parent is very attentive mm. on the kids mm. grow up, yes. I think he has to maybe uh, to choose good shoes. Mm. Shoes are more important than games or other things. Mm. Of course, involve the health of mm. the kids. Yes, it's they are obviously very. Uh, uh, important for the development of, of uh, the child. Yes, absolutely. Um, I know you are about or you are presenting a new capsule collection uh, here at Pitti. May I quickly, before we come uh, and turn to that, ask you in how many countries are you actually uh, operational or how, to how many countries do you export uh, your, your products? Is Europe the Sen really the, the most important uh, part uh, of your export markets, or are there other markets which are growing nicely and which or where you see great potential? Yes, for example, we are of course selling in uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, France, but also in Asia. Okay. So, our best market in the moment are Japan and Korea. Okay. South Very Korea. Yes. So, we are a little bit changing also our mm -hmm. minds about export because. Okay. Um, we are not selling a lot in Italy, yes. we are better concentrated on the export. I see, yes. But at the beginning we were selling in Europe. In yes. the last five years we have developed also other markets like okay. Asian markets. Okay. And the next um, project, market project for us will be US. Okay, okay. We are working yes. for that. That's a vast market. Um, fine, let's, because you know, time is uh, running uh, out, shall we talk a, a bit about the new uh, collection uh, that uh, you are Muso. presenting here? Exactly. Yeah. Is What's the idea behind it? Hmm? Muso is a very special and fun collection because um, we created with this young illustrator some character, uh, monstrous characters, and we we change all the shoes, also the structure, in monster shoes. Mm -hmm. Really. Okay. Yes. So uh, I think kids will love very much this kind of product yes. because it's not a normal shoe. Mm. It's a mix yeah. of quality for the mothers and also uh, expectations for kids because normally kids love colors and mm. something creative so we, we try to mix and to put together both mm. of the aspects okay do you um, you know when you uh, uh, develop this idea uh, do you test it? Do you have kind of prototypes of these shoes and then run them past, you know, they call it focus groups, you know, in order to see does it go down well or not? How? Yes, for example, at the moment we are cooperating with a lot of fashion bloggers yes. that are using Muso yes. in, their, um, in, the, in their work. So they also tested the shoes mm -hmm. and kids. Mm. And at the moment, kids are enthusiastic about this product mm. because they really think they are playing. They are not wearing shoes, mm. but they are playing. Mm. And with friends, they can say, yes, I have my monster, mm. uh, you have your monster. It's mm. like a play for them. Mm. So at the moment, kids are really, really enthusiastic about this product. Fantastic. Wonderful. That's lovely. I think we can come to an end.